but is an often neglected component of your brakes. That soft, mushy feeling you get in your pedal can be a sign that you have old water-laden brake fluid. I'm here today to show you how anyone at home can change your brake fluid safely and easily. Let's go. Never use brake fluid that's already been opened before because it absorbs water out of the air. So, equipment that you'll need. Brake fluid, container for waste brake fluid, rags and a turkey baster. Optional, rubber hose, lug wrench, small box wrench, jack and jack stands. Most vehicles use DOT3 brake fluid. You can use DOT4, but you're gonna have to change it out more often. Take your turkey baster and the container, and you wanna leave just enough fluid at the bottom so that air can't work its way into your system. Okay, it's time to put fresh brake fluid into the system. Prestone brake fluid lasts longer than minimum spec brake fluid, and they use corrosion inhibitors to help keep your brake system running longer. Some of you might wanna stop here. You've flushed out more than half your system, and if you do this every year, you'll be good to go. We're gonna keep going and flush out the rest of the lines though. Jack up the vehicle on jack stands and remove the wheels. You can do one wheel at a time if you don't have four jack stands. Start with the wheel furthest from the master cylinder, usually the right rear. Then work in closer, left rear, right front, and left front. Okay, so now that we're here, you wanna find the bleeder fitting with a rubber cap on it. Once you located it, give it a quick wipe, remove the rubber cap, take your wrench, put it over top, and the hose on top of that. The hose you then want to run into the waste bucket. For this next step, I called my buddy Tom to come and give me a hand just to make my life a little easier. Hey, buddy. Hey. All right, let's get this going. All right. With one person in the driver's seat and one at the wheel, when you're ready with your hose and wrench in place, you say to the person in the driver's seat, brake. Brake. You then open the valve and you'll see dirty brake fluid come out. Care must be taken not to let air into the system. So before he releases his foot off the brake, you have to shut the valve. Release. Release. Repeat this process until all the dirty fluid has been drained out and you can only see clean fluid. But make sure that you don't run the reservoir dry and suck in air that way. Make sure to fill up the reservoir after you bleed each wheel. When all four wheels are done, Give one final top off, and you're done. What's more, there's another great advantage to switching to Castrol GTX Magnatech. Ready to protect from the moment you start. To what goes on under the hood when we start the engine. All that rubbing and that pressing can lead to a phenomenon called abrasion. Material is lost from these critical surfaces. And once that material is lost, then the engine will never run quite as well again. On a global level, engine wear is one of the greatest challenges facing vehicles today. For almost 20 years, Castrol has been working on a solution. What we've been doing at Castrol is working on very special kinds of molecules. So the benefit of Castrol GTX Magnatech is that it offers instant protection from the moment you start. Giving us all peace of mind, knowing our car engines are well protected. The transmission oil is a key component in the gearbox. It is like the bearings or the gears, we need it. I'm very happy with the support that we get from the, the Shell lubricant specialists. Uh, in this development process. They are able to uh, combine the fuel efficiency benefits that we want to give to our customer with the, the, the durability that we also need. Every part of your vehicle has been meticulously designed, so you need to use a lubricant that is just as well designed to protect it. Shell Lubricants engineers have developed Shell Spirax, a world-class transmission range of axle, gear and automatic transmission fluids to enable drivers, fleet owners and owner-operators to select the oil that will deliver Shell's optimum value through enhanced wear protection, long oil life and efficiency. Protecting components is even more relevant in harsh driving conditions. Experts believe that most of the wear in a gearbox occurs during shifting, high-speed operations and at start-up. In fact, 
This occurs in the very first seconds you start your car. While the oil rests in the sump, the gears start turning and meshing, resulting in the inevitable race between any mechanical stress and the oil aiming to prevent it happening. A top-tier synthetic oil has a flatter variation of viscosity with temperature compared with a conventional lubricant. This gives benefits both at lower temperatures, less friction, and at high temperatures, more protection. This means that even at high temperatures, all the moving parts are evenly lubricated, leading to less mechanical stress and a longer gearbox life. Since 2008, every Honda has been equipped with a tire pressure monitoring system, also referred to as TPMS. The TPMS is designed to alert the driver of significantly low pressure in one or more of the tires. Many TPMS systems in Honda vehicles use sensors inside the wheels to determine if the tires are inflated to proper specification. When the air pressure in a tire drops a certain amount below specification, an indicator is illuminated on the vehicle's instrument panel. The TPMS sensors are powered by a small, internally sealed battery that provides an operational life of 7 to 10 years. Because the battery is not separately replaceable, the sensors must be replaced when the battery's near the end of their life. When the battery charge becomes too low, the TPMS indicator on the vehicle's instrument panel will illuminate, indicating a failure in the TPMS system. In this state, the system no longer will monitor tire pressure, and the driver will need to increase the frequency of their manual checks of each tire's pressure and condition. If the TPMS indicator illuminates in your vehicle, make an appointment with your local dealer to have the TPMS serviced. Dealers may also use a TPMS tool to determine the remaining battery life for each of the sensors. If one or more of the batteries are found to have a low charge, the dealer may recommend replacement of all four sensors to avoid multiple dealer visits. Dealers make this recommendation because if one battery has a low charge, it's likely the other batteries are nearing the end of their operational life as well. It's important to always use Honda Genuine Parts to help ensure that your vehicle's tire pressure monitoring system performs as designed. Honda Genuine Parts are designed and built to provide the same fit, function, and reliability as the parts that were installed when the vehicle was made. Proper care and maintenance of the tire pressure monitoring system is necessary to help ensure that the system will alert you in the event of a significant pressure loss. In Before starting the flush and fill process, it's important to check the specific cooling system capacity, maintenance and change intervals, antifreeze water ratio, and cooling system service instructions recommended for your vehicle. To avoid personal injury while performing maintenance on your vehicle, following proper safety procedures is a must. Always ensure your car is off and the engine is cold. You should never handle or inspect antifreeze coolant on a hot engine. Be sure to wear safety glasses and gloves. Always wash your hands after contact with antifreeze coolant. To flush and fill your cooling system, you will need Prestone Antifreeze Coolant, Prestone 5050 Premixed Antifreeze Coolant, Prestone Flush Plus Cleaner, a garden hose, funnel, two gallon bucket, distilled water, and a clean dry cloth or rag. Next, locate and carefully remove the cooling system fill cap on your vehicle. The fill cap may be located on the radiator, engine, pressure tank, or one of the hoses. Consult the manufacturer directions for further information if necessary. Locate and open the cooling system drain valve so it can be emptied. If you make contact with the antifreeze coolant, rinse exposed skin with soap and water. Once emptied, close the drain valve and put the used antifreeze coolant into sealed containers. Be sure to clearly label them as used antifreeze coolant. To avoid accidents, never use old beverage or common household containers to store waste. Disposal of used antifreeze coolant must be done properly and never drained into storm sewers, septic systems, or on the ground. Check local disposal laws and regulations for more information. In many areas, special reclamation centers are set up for collection. While you locate a center in your area, store containers in a secure location away from children or pets. 
cleaning the cooling system is recommended. To do this, simply fill the system with the cleaner and water to the correct level according to the manufacturer's directions and replace the cooling system cap. Start the engine with the heater on high until the operating temperature gauge reads normal and then continue for an additional 10 minutes. Shut off the engine and allow it to cool. Once the engine is completely cool, carefully remove the cooling system cap and drain the entire system again. Be sure to close the cooling system drain valve once completed. Now it's time to fill the system with water to the correct level according to the manufacturer's directions and replace the cooling system cap. Start the engine and run until normal operating temperature is achieved and an additional 10 minutes. Shut off the engine and allow it to cool completely. Now redrain the engine and close the drain valve. To ensure the flushing process is completed properly, it's recommended to repeat step 6 once again. If the cooling system has a recovery bottle, be sure to empty and rinse with water. To fill the cooling system with new antifreeze coolant, it's important to determine the system capacity and calculate how much Prestone Concentrate Antifreeze Coolant to install. Unless your manual says otherwise, the traditional ratio of antifreeze coolant to water is 50-50. Fill the system halfway with antifreeze coolant, add distilled water, and replace the cooling system cap. If your system has a recovery bottle, don't forget to refill to the proper level with desired ratio. Run the engine for 10 minutes after reaching normal operating temperature and inspect the system for leaks. Shut off the engine and allow it to cool. It's important to check the cooling system level and top off with Prestone 50-50 premix if needed. After two days of driving, check the concentration with Prestone antifreeze coolant tester and adjust the ratio if necessary. To maintain maximum engine protection, it's recommended to flush and fill your cooling system every five years or refer to your owner's manual for more information. One thing we got to do if we're ever going to fire this truck up is get a good battery in it because this one is dead smoked. Now the one thing we have is some nice terminals which is cool. We don't have to replace those. Look what I got us man from AC Delco, our friends over there, professional gold series battery. They're built with a better reserve capacity. These things are just top notch man. We're talking everything you need performance wise from a battery with a 42 month warranty. Yeah, but that 42 month means at 41 and like 29 days if yeah. it goes out. You get a brand new one. It's not prorated. You're not yeah, getting man. a percentage, right? Hey, and that's big. When you go out shopping for a battery, look at that, man. A lot of guys don't offer a free warranty, an exchange warranty. They'll give you a prorated discount, and you'll have to pay for another battery. Yeah, now we're going for durability here, right? Because we've got a truck. It's now lowered. It's on some stiffer springs, but we still want to do truck yeah. stuff with it. Yeah. So this thing's got to be able to you know, have a lot of sort of vibration resistance, durability. Mm -hmm. So the casing on these is a lot more rugged than a traditional battery. It holds the plates in tighter, yeah. right? So everything stays where it should, doesn't shake apart and fatigue after a while. Now, if you notice, I'm kind of going in reverse. I'm putting the red one on first, right? Yep. And make sure you get a good connection. If you got to go in there with a little scotch bride, if yeah. you got some corrosion, a little sandpaper, do it. You want a good connection to that terminal. Yeah, man, we've done the baking soda trick. You've seen that a couple times. The great thing we like about these AC Delco Professional Series batteries is this terminal is resistant to a lot of that corrosion and acid and a lot of that seepage that you're going to see in a lot of batteries when you pop the hood.